ಸಹನಾವತು ಸಹನೋಪನತು ಸಹ ವೀರ್ಯಂ ಕರವಾವಹೈ ತೇಜಸ್ವಿನಾವತೀತಮಸ್ತು ಮಾವಿಷಾವಹೈ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಹರಿ ಓಂ ಎವ್ರಿ ಒನ್ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಆನ್ ಬಿಹಾಫ್ ವಿವೇಕ್ಜಿ ಆನ್ ಬಿಹಾಫ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಕೋರ್ಡಿನೇಟರ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ mentorship program we're really excited to have everyone here for our wellness workshop with Sharon Yarao um so this is going to be a really fun dynamic jam packed workshop so I'll get us going um fairly quickly um this was actually a topic that's that's come up a lot in our whatsapp that's come up a lot in surveys where you know folks are really um in our in our community in our group are really trying to align their work their education um to their higher purpose and we're so lucky because we have uh, someone in our community who has you know designed her whole life around helping people do that um sharonya rao some of you are um maybe maybe familiar with her i've known sharonya for uh, a number of years i'm very lucky to have um met her at csk camps at chick camps and she's really um a really prominent wonderful chick and csk figure who's really brought um chick to life in the US um and you know now CSK and so i'll read a little bit of um her bio and then i'll hand it over to her without further ado so sharanya rao is a seeker a coach a mom and wife she's a third generation chinmay mission devotee and third culture kid who was born in india raised in singapore and lives in the US and fun fact she's actually in singapore right now um she was a litigation warrior a uh, litigation lawyer not warrior um in singapore who transitioned through two careers across two countries to become a professional career and leadership coach her coaching company is kindle life coaching inspired by pooja gurudev's uh book kindle life spirit spirituality has been a pillar for her throughout her life beginning in chick she has served in my mission in various capacities a board member in singapore a yuva veer in india and serving on the chick west steering committee in north america she currently facil- facilitates three csk study groups she's delighted to share her insight today on her two favorite topics spirituality and career development and lead us in an exploration of how to align our work with our swadharma so very excited about this topic glad everyone could join and i'll hand it over to sharanya thank you puja for such a kind introduction i'm going to share my screen and let me know if y'all can see it yes yes all right well first of all it is such an honor to be with all of you here today when uh, puja first approached me about doing this workshop i thought what an amazing opportunity to talk about two of my favorite topics right so i it's such an honor and pleasure to be here and i'm going to start off by giving a quick road map of where we're headed in this you know next hour or so first i want to share a little bit about my career journey and my struggles and i think many of you will be able to relate to what i've been through and it will also help set the context of why finding so my swadharma was so important to me the second thing is we'll move into a discussion around what is career success like what does that mean to us because i think that's such an important starting point right we really need to be clear about what that end goal is before we can actually move towards it after that we'll explore what swadharma is all about and i think many of you already know what it is we have some um preconceived notions about it and so we'll reconnect to our shastras to see what is it that they say about swadharma and why it is so important and then finally we'll do a short activity where it will be a starting point to finding out what your swadharma is and and we may be at different parts of the journey in finding our swadharma and so if anything i think this will be a starting point or for some people deeper than that those who can stay past the hour we'll do a, a q and a session um and i just want to kind of set some expectations around what you're going to get out of this session um for some of you it may be a curtain call moment where you discover what it is and 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 it may not be and and whatever it is it's fine because for some people it's harder to find 
their swadharma than others, right? And my hope is that today's session will give you a starting point to how to align your work with swadharma. And I'll also have a list of resources at the end so that you can take that exploration deeper in your own time. And in terms of the format, you know, I'd like to keep the session interactive. So along the way, I'll, I'll ask a few questions. Um, and then if you have specific questions, please put them in the chat. Um, I just want to design this also with the admins. I, I'm, I'm navigating a couple of windows. So if you see some questions, please give me a heads up because I, I may not see the question. And then either I'll address them in, in the session itself or in, in Q&A. So let's get started. Um, you know, I wanna start by saying that although I'm a third generation Chima Mission devotee, um, my grandparents actually used to organize Gurudev's Yagnas in uh, Mangalore in the 1950s. And my mom was a Baldihar child. But spirituality didn't become a priority for me pretty much until I was in college. And I had already picked my profession, right? I had studied law. And not because I wanted to be a lawyer, but because it was going to be a stepping stone for me to the foreign service. And I didn't get into the foreign service. So I had to, you know, law was my plan B and I had to go with my plan B. And I was very unhappy. I was very stressed out. Um, I lost a ton of weight, you know, it was unhealthy for me. And I really felt out of place. That's when I started asking the deeper questions around, you know, what was I really, what was I born to do? Like, what, what is the meaning of all this, right? And, and that was the time that spirituality came to the forefront. You know, we all have inflection points in our lives, right? That point in our lives where we feel like we're sitting on the precipice of some big change or some transition. And, and it may be due to a life altering circumstance. It may be um, due to a positive event or realization, but, but something in us shifts and we're not quite the same. And we, we can't go back to how we were. And then the way forward is also not very clear, right? So you're really sitting in that space of you know, what we call the unbounded, the unbounded space. That happened, so I had two of those moments. One was when I was a stressed lawyer and I was trying to figure out you know, what this all means and, and how, can I, you know, how can I be more on purpose. And I went on a yatra um, in 2001 to the Himalayas with Swami Mitranj. After that trip, I was so deeply inspired to find my Swadharma that it, it, it really brought that to the forefront. You know, and, and I knew being a lawyer wasn't it. Now, so, so many of us do this when we're not clear about what exactly the next step is. Like I decided the answer to lack of clarity is more education, right? And that's what brought me to the US to do my master's of law in dispute resolution. And after a lot of searching, um, I pivoted to government. And so I was a public servant for about eight years. And I knew I still hadn't found my swadharma in my career. Um, but at the same time, what was going on was I was very engaged in mission work. And that's where I saw my best self shine. And it, it became a growing gap for me, right? Who I was and how I was showing up at work and what I was really capable of. My next inflection point happened when I had my first kid. You know, and that's when I really, it, it drove some accountability for me, right? What's worth it to leave my kid at home and, and go to work? What does true career success look like? What, what is success on my terms? What does that look like? And so for me, it had to be meaningful. It had to be impactful, right? I wanted to make a decent living, right? And I wanted to fully integrate spirituality into my work. I wanted my work to become a platform for my evolution. Now that inquiry, that quest to bring my whole self to work is what brought me into coaching. Because you know, in coaching, I feel like I'm finally doing the thing I was born to do. 
you know, um, I, you know, the, the, the skill I have, and I sort of boiled it down to like the skill I have is to ask good questions, right? Throughout my life, you know, I had been told, hey, you know, you, you ask too many questions and you ask really good questions. And, and it was that skill that, you know, used in the service of others is, is, is what made coaching an ideal platform for me. Now my goal is to be of service to others who are on their yatra. So I wanna start there, right? What does career success mean to you? You know, after all, Swadharma is, is a vehicle to our end goal. So we need to be clear on what that end goal is. What does success look like for me? And then once we're clear on that, then we can focus on how to get there. Take a few minutes to, to put in your answers and we'll see see what y'all think. Supporting as many people as possible. Being able to achieve a meaningful difference in the field you care about. Mm -hmm. Balance of purpose, joy in work, leaving a positive impact. Intellectual stimulation, stability. Mm -hmm happiness, happy doing what you're doing, attaining goals, making a difference in people's lives. Like a strong theme that's coming up here in, in for, for many of us is having impact, like positive impact and meaning and, and purposeful, right? Purpose, peace and helping others. So service is also a, another theme giving back to the community, again, service. Being content. And you know, here I would dig around, what is it that, that fills you with contentment? Right, what are the, let's, let's, let, let's dig a little deeper there. And you know, happiness, contentment is usually a product of something being honored for you, right? You know, all these are your values. So what are those? Individual components, impact, um, helping someone, guidance, spirituality, self-discipline, doing something I love and creative and positive impact. Yeah, serving. Yeah. Is there any any in the chat? No, okay, awesome. So you know, one of the things to, to, um, to consider is really defining what career success means to you, right? And, and asking yourself, hey, what, what is that end goal I have? And then what are the elements that are important to me, right? Like in my case, it was like impact was very important. Um, you know, I, I, you know, other, you know, one of my other values was like freedom. Like I, I wanted an, an autonomy. I really wanted to be able to kind of make my own decisions and, and, and have the spaciousness to decide what I want to do and not always have somebody to report to um, and follow somebody else's vision, right? So when you define what career success is, then you can pull out the elements of what makes, um, what makes uh, career success for you, right? And my question is, I guess, to start asking yourself like, hey, does your definition of career success encompass your spiritual quest? Or are you seeing this as something completely separate? You know, for some people, it's you know, the spiritual quest is a spiritual quest, and then work is just something that sort of, you know, brings in some stability or, you know, financial independence. For some people, it's about, hey, I, I, wanna, I wanna integrate these, right? And so, be clear, and, and wherever you are is fine, but just be clear on what you're working towards, right? Because if, if for instance, if you want spirituality um, as part of your, if spirituality is a definition of career success, then, you know, you can go deeper into your swadharma, right? And, and really bring to the forefront um, you know, in, in, in a couple of slides, we'll talk about like, what questions would you ask differently um, from, from that perspective? 
So really the first step is, you know, define what is success and then pull out the elements that are important to you and make a list, right? What are the things that you, re you really need to have to make a career fulfilling? And then we'll move into kind of, you know, what is Swadharma, right? Why is like, is Swadharma important to our goal, right? Can you get to your career success through another route? Like, is there something else that you can do? Um, and so to understand the importance, let's go to the verse in the Bhagavad Gita that addresses Swadharma. And I find this so interesting, really, that Arjuna was contemplating a career transition. Um, but, you know, he was, he was thinking to himself, like, hey, I, I'm tired of being a warrior. Like, you know, it's too painful for me. Like, I, I have to sacrifice so much. And, you know, I, I might bring about death and devastation. Like, I don't want to do this anymore. I, I want to be a renunciate. You know, that sounds more peaceful to me. You know, I get to do my own thing. <laughs> and, you know, instead of Lord Krishna sort of handing him in, here's your career transition plan. He, he tells them, hey, no, you must do your swadharma, right? It's okay if you do this imperfectly. It's okay if, you know, you mess up because the alternative is far worse. And so in, in this uh, verse from chapter three, verse 35, we can pull out in, in, Gur in Gurudev's commentary, he defines what is um, a working definition of swadharma, right? And that is like, what's your innate ability? What's, what's the thing that comes to you effortlessly? What, what work do you lose yourself in? What work do you love to do, right? And, and this is important because this, this helps you sort of dissolve the ego, right? When, when you're so um, in tune with the work, then that sense of ego dissolves and, and you, are, you are that, like you are, you are doing that work. So it's the innate um, qualities. And then also here, kind of another aspect of this is, you know, Swadharma is so important that it is better to do your Swadharma badly, right? And it, or even like die doing it, than it is to do somebody else's Swadharma. In, in kind of the modern context, what it's telling us is, hey, you know, if, if you're, and I'm just giving these examples because it's so, it's, it's a common example, right? It's better to be a bad artist, you know, doing art, something that you love, than to be a successful accountant. And when you think about it, this is so counter to our, you know, to our wiring. Right? When you think, it's particularly in the Asian community, because we tend to focus on security rather than purpose. Right? So this verse is telling us that our innate tendencies are what's paramount. Right? And, and so this shifts how we look at work, because what this is calling for is an identity shift. I'm gonna pause here um, and maybe take a few comments from the chat or you know, from, from anybody who's maybe, either you're seeing this verse for the first time or something about you, um, or something about this verse strikes you and, and just kind of open it up and, and hear. Does anybody have any comments, anything that you wanna share? Maybe you can raise your virtual hand. Yeah, Samya, Samya Kukarni. Hey, I'm Sharanya Ji. So one thing that I was thinking about when reading uh, the descriptions that you have on the slide here is I'm thinking about how we think a lot of the times how, like Vivekji tells us that our nature is towards um, infinity. And so in a sense, our like all of our sadharma is to, to find happiness and to find joy. Um, but also like I think about all of the tiny vasanas that I have in my life, like wanting coffee or like whatever, like the small, small things. And like, I feel like those aren't necessarily directed towards happiness or towards joy. And so I'm trying to like fit together those two things and, and how they so yeah if you had any insight on that 
Ah, oh, that's a great question. Yeah, and like the term vasanas, you know, sometimes it is, is earned a little bit of a bad rep <laughs> in, in, in our explanation of spirituality, because, you know, on the one hand, you're, you're supposed to exhaust your vasanas, right? And then here it feels like, well, what do you mean, like, you know, use that as, so that actually, and that feeds into a great question for the next slide. Um, looking at work as a platform to exhaust your vasanas. Right, and and you and and also using that in in service of because when you work through your vasanas in service of, then you're not uh, acquiring more and more um, karma, right? So th there's an aspect of there's two aspects here. One is following the your innate abilities, right? But then also in service of others. Um, so let, let's go, well, uh, let me pause and see, is there any, so thank you for the questions on that. That was very beautiful. Is there anybody else who would like to share? You can raise your virtual hand. Yeah. I think what stood out to me, Sharina, was that last part, um, mm -hmm. the, you know, even if he be living a nobler and diviner life, like even mm -hmm. if, um, you know, you're doing more service or you're doing something for the greater good, like it's still dangerous um, to suppress your own personality expression. I think that's very powerful. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so much of, you know, again, like our how we think about our career and, and what we should be doing in, at work like is, is driven by the external standards of success, right? And even in a good way, like not just more money, but maybe even like more service or more impact, right? There's, there's a deeper question here. Are you doing the thing that you were born to do in that service, right? And, and that, that really, that really has to go against the grain sometimes of the thinking that we're so used to, um, that, that society has kind of, you know, um, developed over the years. Radhika ji, did you have a final comment? Yeah. I, I think you're so muted. Okay, yeah, so um, I just, uh, felt like the Swadharma. Swadharma uh, is like one's inner calling and was very beautifully explained by you that yes, that's how you need to, especially the career path and what you're doing majority of the time should be on the basis of that inner calling. That is very important. However, the cravings that the question was raised about, you know, tendencies or cravings about, you know, I like coffee and things like that. Those are the gunas and each one mm -hmm. of us come with some form of a guna. So that's like the lower self and the higher self and the lower self and also the body is a big aspect of it needs good nurturing. It needs good nutrition. So that need not be overlooked but the focus and attention should be, should be to nurture our inner calling and our mm -hmm. inner calling, truest calling is to find happiness mm -hmm. in the true sense. That is so. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I see Priya's hand also up. I'm going to take you in just a second, Priya. Um, one thing I, I want to, there's a very beautiful story and many of us are already familiar with this. You know, when Dronacharya ji asks Arjuna, and the Kauravas and the Pandavas, right? <clears throat> He's training them in archery. And he says like, you know, look, look at the branches like, you know, over there, what do you see? Tell me what you see. And you, you think stress like, I see the vastness of the sky. And <laughs> I think Bhima is like, I see the branches. And then, you know, Arjuna says, I see, you know, and then I think somebody else says, like, I see a bird. And then Arjuna says, I see the eye of the bird, right? And his focus as, as a warrior is so innate to him, right? And it is so intrinsic to who he is. And, you know, Gurudev says, supposing he had become, uh, you know, a, a hermit, <laughs> like what would he be doing? He would try to, you know, he would try to like shoot the, uh, you know, probably shoot like the wild animals that were coming. Like, you know, those tendencies are so strong in him, 
that they would have manifested anyway and and they need to be exhausted right and then the part we'll come to is around like that service aspect priya last last comment from you and then i'll, I'll move Hadio, my sincere apologies for my video. I'm in a very bad place and it'll boot me out if I turn the video on. So my apologies for that. Um, I just love that you're bringing this up today. Uh, I was at uh, our local ashram at the graduation uh, ceremony and um, there were uh, some people sitting at the um, lunch table with me and it was like a father speaking about his... Um, soon to be senior in high school. And the, uh, the whole conversation was about, um, <clears throat> someone asked, oh, what is, you know, so-and-so going to be doing, uh, pursuing in 12th and beyond? And the father said, oh, well, um, this summer he's going to India and going to be doing a medical uh, internship and somebody said, oh, is he interested in medicine? So he's going for medicine. And the father said, well, he's interested in medicine, but he's really good at physics and math. So we are trying to persuade him to go into the physics and math. And, um, and then the other person said, oh, that's interesting. Why is that? And the father said, because there's a lot of job security in that. Um, and I, <laughs> it took everything in my being to not say anything right there because it was a lunch thing. Nobody was asking for my opinion. Um, but <laughs> um, I just love that you're bringing this out and that there are seekers that are like interested in this because I do think it will come and catch up with you. And um, I think it is so important for us to heed Begawan's words in this. And the other thing I wanted to kind of ask out there is, um, I, I, I'm a coach, I coach parents. And one of the things that come up a lot is, um, how do I reconcile like what my child's purpose is with what they like to do? Can you like shed a little insight on the distinction for them? between what someone really likes to do, and I'm not talking about younger kids, I'm talking about like a little bit older kids, yeah. um, what they like to do versus what their swadharma is. Because I, I hear this conversation a lot, like, oh, my child really likes, you know, physics, so therefore they're gonna go into physics. Like, mm -hmm. and I know from my own personal journey that what you like and what you were made for can be different things. Can you share a little insight on that, please? Yes. So I swear, you know, Priya and I haven't talked before this, and this is not a planned transition, <laughs> but I think we're just really in tune with each other. Um, so that that's actually kind of the next inquiry, right? Like um, the, the questions that you will ask, depending on whether you see yourself as a job seeker or as a seeker, right? Um, Ask yourself, like, what identity are you prioritizing? Are you first a seeker and then a job seeker, or is it the other way around, right? Because it's an important inquiry because your primary identity will shift the conversation you have about your career, and, and it will open some deeper clarity about your swadharma. So here's a list of sort of questions that you might ask. Um, if, you, if you're a job seeker, right, what, what, are, what are your sort of preoccupations what skills can I leverage more to advance? What skills should I develop? How can I showcase my brand? Um, what career option brings me more financial security, right? Who should I network with? How can I increase my visibility? What's my five-year plan, right? And I just wanna be clear, these are, this is not a bad place to be, right? This is, this is by no, I mean, this is a very, um, there, there's no judgment here about whether you're a seeker or a job seeker. I'm just putting it out there that you should ask yourself where you are. If, if this is where you are as a job seeker, then this is where you are, right? And then your, you know, how you choose, you know, how do you start to discover your swadharma is going to look a little different. Um, and remember, it's fine if it's imperfect. It, it's, it's fine if you don't have it all, whoops. Let me go back here, um, sort it out. 
Um, now, the question is, um, if you're a seeker though, the kinds of questions you will be asking are, who am I? Why am I here? What are my innate gifts, right? And, and you, you kind of figure that out from like, hey, when am I at my most joy, joyful and peaceful, right? And so coming to your question, Priya, around like, is it a like, is it like, a, is it fleeting? This is, this is the test, right? Like, are you most joyful and peaceful when you do this particular activity? Then, you know, you'll ask yourself like, hey, what am I being called to do in service of Bhagwan's work? Right? It's not just about my own visibility. It is what am I being called to do for, uh, in service of Bhagwan, right? How do I become an instrument of Bhagwan? This was a very pivotal question for me when I asked myself like, you know, what's the thing I can do? Like, how do I become an instrument for Gurudev's work, right? Um, well, what can I use that I can be in service of, of, of his work? Then in terms of your networking questions, you know, instead of asking like, who should I network with? You'll be thinking about like, hey, who brings me energy? And then who do I energize, right? So your, your synergy flow is gonna be completely different. Then like, how do I harness my gifts in service of others? So this isn't just about your own advancement. Again, no judgment there. But as a seeker, your goal is around serving others, right? And then finally, like a very important question is like, hey, how can my work be a platform for my evolution? Which is very different from what's my 10-year plan, what's my five-year plan, right? That's when work can become transforming. So, I think it's really important like, to ask ourselves the right questions. Like if we don't ask ourselves the right questions, we're gonna find it very hard to be, become aligned with our soul dharma. And it's easy to become confused um, or you know, like be held back by fear, you know, fear of failure, fear of insecurity, fear of rejection, right? Um, and you know, I was joking with um, Gantanin, which are before this, I'm like, there is a whole separate workshop here <laughs> on how do you work through all of this um, to discover your Swadharma. We're not going to go into that today. Here's something that's maybe a little bit more of a helpful sort of starting point, right? Um, to ask yourself, hey, when do I feel like I'm an instrument of the divine, right? And then when, when can I become a clear channel? Like in, in what activities do I experience flow? Do I experience that sort of peace and joy and, and, and also impact, right? When do I really feel on purpose? So I have a quick exercise that, um, that we can do and it's a visualization. So if you're comfortable, um, please, please join in. And if not, you can just you know, do whatever you're comfortable with. You know, for some people, they want to close their eyes and listen. Some people want to open their eyes and sort of, you know, focus elsewhere, turn off your camera, maybe just for this, um, if the admins are okay with. And we'll do a quick visualization and then I'll have some reflection questions for you. So um, if you're, whether you're seated on the ground or in the chair, get comfortable in your chair and keep your back straight and not sort of, straight like tight but and stiff but just comfortable and um, upright right and then gently close your eyes or pick and pick a spot that's that, that will keep your eyes lowered and the, and the goal of this and the reason we do this is to just kind of shut away external distractions to help us focus within um, and become aware of your breath taking a deep breath inhale exhale and feel, feel your weight being supported by the ground or the chair. You can literally sink in here and you will be held. You can think of you know, sort of deep roots growing into the chair or the ground. And feeling the strength of that support. 
And so you can begin to relax your feet, your shins, your knees, your entire leg can be relaxed. Relax your abdominal area. And if it helps, you can take a deep breath here. Inhale. Exhale. Relax your lungs, your chest. And take a moment to really connect with your heart. For some people, it helps to just put a hand over your heart. Our rational capacities are really overused in a lot of ways. And there's a lot of wisdom in the heart. And it keeps blood pumping throughout the entire body without being asked, without being reminded. It senses. There's a deeply intelligent organ that's sensing. Everything from where blood needs to flow more, where that needs to be adjusted, to wisdom. Relax your shoulders, your arms, your hands. Feel your upper body deeply, deeply relaxed. It's, it's almost like you can float away. But you're being held by the ground. Relax your neck, your throat. This, is, this really allows your inner voice to be shared with the world. Relax your jaws, your face, your forehead. And let your brain have a break. We use it so much. Let it go, take a deep breath, inhale, exhale. Clear your mind, create spaciousness. We're gonna in invite a memory of your best self. Connect with an incident, it could be in college, it could be earlier, it could be much later when you felt deeply alive and you were at your best when you were in your zone. Just feel the aliveness. And make mental notes of where you were what you were doing, what were the activities. Perhaps there was a range of activities. You know, walk yourself through the different things you did that brought you aliveness. Notice colors, notice sounds. Notice emotions. 
in yourself. And then also others around you. What, what was the impact you had as a result of the work you did? What did people experience? Not the reactions you're seeing. Take a deep breath in here. Exhale. Now keep that memory in your mind and know that you can come back to it at any time. And start to wiggle your toes. Move your shoulders. And whenever you're ready, you can gently open your eyes. Yeah. So if you have some pen and paper, or if you want to do it on your phone, whatever is comfortable, um, take note of these questions and, and maybe do a quick reflection. From your visualization, what activities were you engaged in? So for instance, when I visualize this, you know, for me, my best self was when I, when I did a theater production called Yatra, A Journey into the Unknown, and um, it was 20 years ago. And the, the activities that come up for me are directing, um, putting together a production, like talking through, you know, talking through the script with actors, right? So, I wasn't necessarily center stage, but I was an integral part of the process. And then ask yourself, what was the purpose of those activities? Like what's that higher purpose? You know, why, why were you doing those different things? Um, you know, for me, it was really getting, getting a message out, get it, awakening, right? The audience um, to spirituality. Was, uh, it was a play on Vedanta. So the goal of like why I was doing what I was doing was like, hey, like I want people to understand concepts in Vedanta. I want, I want this to, I want people to awaken. And then ask yourself, what was the impact you had on others? What did people experience when you were your best self? And for me, it was like transformation and clarity. Right, people coming up to me afterwards and going like, hey, wow, like I never saw those, those gunas, like, you know, being, you know, depicted that way. Like that's clear to me now how this concept works or, hey, that has me thinking about my own life, right? They don't necessarily, they didn't necessarily sort of agreed with me on everything, but it, it brought about a shift. So that's the impact that I have when I met my best, right? When you have these three pieces, you can start to think about, you know, and in coaching, we do this, this work more deeply. Like, what is my purpose? What are the activities that light me up? What, are, what is the kind of impact that I can really have? Um, and what, what really drives, what has meaning for me and what drives me? And putting together these pieces gives you a deeper sense of what your purpose is. And then you can translate that into okay, what does that look like in the workplace? Or what does that look like in my current job? Or is my current job aligned with that, right? Like, do I get to, like, for instance, when I was a lawyer, I wasn't doing any awakening. <laughs> like, you know, I, um, 
you know, that was like, it had nothing to do with spirituality, like none of the things that lit me up. Um, but in coaching, that's the work I get to do, right? It isn't like in, in coaching, it's not instructional. It's not like I'm, I'm here to teach you something. It is partnering with you to awaken what you already know about yourself, right? So that that purpose is very much in a line for me in, in coaching. And then also, you know, I live for my clients like aha moments and, and their moments of, of clarity, right? That's when I know that I've been on my best, um, you know, which is very different when I was a lawyer because people didn't always feel a sense of transformation or clarity. I mean, you know, they, maybe they got more money, um, maybe, you know, they, they got a resolution. It may not be the resolution that they were seeking that would make a difference in their lives. So, by the way, this is not to take away from anybody who's a lawyer here, right? Like law for you might be different according to your purpose, um, but it's important to get clear. So these are the three questions um, and maybe we can put them in the chat as well. What I wanna do next is let's, let's go into a discussion group. Um, we have a breakout now. And, and what's something, what's an insight maybe you had from your vis visualization? You can either answer the, the three earlier questions if you would like, or maybe it's, it's something more personal for you um, and you wanna share something different. That's fine. In the interest of time, we have some announcements first. And then for those who can stay, you're welcome to stay and sort of share anything that you wanna share. Uh, and, and if it's, you know, if you're gonna share, then share your own insight and, and not something that you heard from the group. Um, and then we'll also have some time for questions. I have a very quick thing before the announcements. I think those, uh, to, just to catch people who are leaving. Um, I have a list of resources to, th that can be really helpful. Um, I'm gonna share them here first, and then you can, uh, we'll, we'll also maybe put this in an email and send it out. Um, Swami, Mukhya Swamiji's uh, Make It Happen DVD was very helpful to me many, many, many years ago. And then there have been several iterations of the CD. And he explores also the concept of Sodharma and kind of, you know, and, and it's an interactive CD. So you can kind of do a little bit deeper work um, and think about what activities and gifts you have, et cetera. Swami Apar Aparajitananji's um, talk on Sodharma is also very helpful. He's, um, he's our Acharya Tanjima Mission in Mangalore. And there's a YouTube link there, how to find your Sodharma. And then from the group Coaches Rising, um, I know Dr. Holly Woods um, has written an amazing book called Finding the Golden Thread of Purpose. And she says, hey, our purpose is not something new that we invent. It's something that's shown up throughout our life. So how do we pull like from different as in different stages of our life, we honor it in different ways, right? So how do we pull that golden thread um, to get clarity about where we are today and, and, and how to arrive at your purpose. And then finally, you know, for those who are maybe still sort of like, oh, is this really relevant for the workplace? Like, you know, um, you may be still on the fence. LinkedIn has an interesting report on um, how purpose is important at work and, and kind of what are the, what's the data behind employee engagement? Um, and so that's something that's, that's interesting to you. You can also take a look at that report. And then I'm going to hand it off to Pooja and Shekel. Awesome. Thank you so much, Sharanya. This was so powerful. I, like, you know, this is Sharanya's life work and, and she distilled it into, you know, a couple of provocations and thoughts that I feel like were really, really impactful. I know I was thinking about things I had never thought about and having those, you know, aha moments that I know you tried to cultivate and um, create. So thank you so much. Um, I really, really love the session and um, hopefully we can get more time with you in the future too. Um, but do stay on folks. Um, uh, we'll do a, a couple of quick announcements. We'll do, we'll wrap up the session and then we'll have uh, 15, 20 minutes of Q&A. Um, I'm just putting announcements off to the right, but um, a couple of uh, a couple of announcements. One, the next Prithvi Save a Sangha workshop is next Sunday, June 26th. Please register. Um, I'll make sure I get working links, yes, in there. Um, two, uh, there's an in-person Chick and CSK retreat happening in DC, July 8th to 10th. So um, please register for that and check that out. 
uh, starting June 21st, Meaningful Mornings, um, we'll be chanting Rudram at 7.30 Eastern, followed by a class with Vivekji at 7.45. Um, we will be starting phase two of registration for the mentorship workshop, uh, mentorship program. Um, so if there's, if there's people you know who you would like to involved in this program, either as mentors or mentees, please start spreading the word out. Um, and we'll be sharing more information about that soon. And then also please invite uh, your parents and grandparents to register for Hi Chai, um, looking to open up some additional spots next month for registration. Awesome. So I'll, I'll chant Om and then we'll stay on for Q&A for those who can stay on. Om. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Yeah, that, that that's that's tricky to kind of say like what is what feels all encompassing to you potentially is definitely a big sign, right? Like for some people, music is their life, right? They just can't help it. Like they are just they're going to be you know jamming. They're going to be you know enrolling in that. Like they feel the pull, um, so it can feel like a big one. But you know, for some of us. And, and this is sometimes due to social conditioning, right? Um, that like it holds us back. Like, or we've been told, hey, don't do that. Like, oh, he put that as a side, side hustle. I don't. So we have to work through that conditioning. And so it can be a soft prompting, right? Um, it, and, and you have to nurture that. So I think it is very important to be very observant and, and self-aware and, and write down like, hey, what do I find myself being drawn to? Um, you know, maybe it's not currently being encouraged or, or something, but like, you know, I, I feel that soft prompting and I, I keep coming back to it. Um, and, and that will kind of help you nurture that. So, you know, to answer your question, like, is it a big wealth? It could be, it could absolutely could be, and, and it may not be, and it, it may be something you have to nurture. Can do that in a number of different ways, either with um, a, a peer group um, that you can kind of go to a regular basis. You know, for some people, therapy is also helpful to kind of process through some of these negative emotions, working with a coach um, to get some new ideas around like, you know, how do you approach conflict, etc. So there, it sounds like you can use resources. You know, it's kind of like the Arjuna situation, right? Where he's like, hey, I don't like certain aspects of my job here. I, I don't want to be fighting my relatives. I don't want to be, you know, like doing this. Like, is it really what, like, and, and Krishna says, hey, go back to your swadharma. That's the most important thing. Even if you're not doing it perfectly, even if it, you know, sometimes um, there, there, couldn't be, there can be challenges, there can be struggles. I think one thing we need to check our expectation of swadharma is, when you find your swadharma, is it going to be happily ever after? Absolutely not. Like we're still in samsar, right? It is going to, like everything, we are going to be living in pairs of opposites. There will be challenges. However, when you're anchored to your swadharma, when you're anchored to your why, you're able to meet these challenges. I'll give an example from my own life, right? Once I became a coach, um, you know, it, it, it wasn't like a curtain call moment, like, ta-da, this is what I was born to do. And then like, now it's all going to be okay. You know, I had my, um, my first child and then, and then my second child was in the NICU. And I, I couldn't go back to work as I had, I had anticipated. I just started my business. And, you know, I did, and, and I did, like, he was in the NICU for two, two and a half months. I had health issues. Um, you know, then I had to figure out what to do with the business. I mean, those, those challenges kept coming. Um, and what was different this time, as opposed to when I was a lawyer, was I knew, I, 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 like, I knew this is my calling. And that gave me, that clarity gave me resources to figure out how to deal with all of these other challenges. Right? That calling was so deep for me. I'm like, what else could I be? Nothing. 
Like, <laughs> this is it for me. Like, I am a coach. And so, it, and, and then, you know, it's opportunities also showed up for me that, that I could take advantage of. So I would say, that's a very long answer to your question, but I think if you know that you're, you're, you're happy with your, your, the work makes you happy, right? You're in alignment there. Then the other challenges you can get support around, right? And, 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 and there are ways to get support. about like the wiring that we sometimes have um, cultivated over time right and and you know we in, in coach speak we call these like our saboteur voices like our, our limiting beliefs um, and those can come up right that you know I'll, uh, again very uh, I'll, I'll give an example from my own life like as a coach um, you know, I, I am constantly like having to deal with like, oh, like, should I partner with this? Should I collaborate with this person? And like, I don't know if like our personalities go or um, should I address this audience? Should I develop this business? So that, um, you know, am I good enough, you know, comes up. Um, so you know, you're not completely free from it, but how I, and there are ways to deal with like looking at like, hey, what is it I'm telling myself? that I can't do, right? For me, uh, an important question is like, how, you know, the question around like, how do I become an instrument? How do, I, how do I become a clear instrument for Bhagavan's work? What do I need to work through? And, and that helps me work through my fears. Um, you know, like, you know, for instance, for instance, say I was terrified to give this talk today. Right? Like, is that, like, I don't know if I can do this. And these are some of my own peers and like, there's all this pressure. And what if I don't, like, what if I don't do well? Um, but the thing that, that grounds me is, okay, I'm here to do Gurudev's work, right? He is going to like, he has a message to, to give everybody. How do I become a clear instrument? I need to work through this fear. Right, um, and I have grounding techniques that I use um, before both coaching sessions and then also public speaking events. I have my daily practice, my daily sadhana. I don't start work without doing that, and that helps with managing fear. Um, and then I think it's also being clear about my purpose, right? Like, this is the work I, I, I was born to do and, and I have to figure this out. And so I think that for me, it is clarity that then helps me figure out like, okay, what is, what is the other stuff I need to work through? What is the, you know, and, and keep those at bay. Um, and then also just tactically, a lot of grounding practices can help with dealing with that, you know. And then sometimes occasionally also like therapy, if you have to work through some, you know, the, the bigger things, um, the bigger emotions, um, the things that like are constantly keeping your wheel spinning, like sometimes that's helpful too, to get some, to get some support around that. When you're connected with your Swadharma, there comes some trust. Um, and, and I'm trying to think of the best way to explain this, right? There is, there is a level of trust in like, hey, um, I, I get to do this work. Like, you know, you know if I'm gonna do Bhagwan's work, like things are going to happen for me. And if things, you know, if things are happening in a way that I don't like, like maybe I need to learn something from this, right? And, and so when you have that trust in, you know, like, hey, I'm, I'm doing my Swadharma and, and I'm doing Bhagwan's work, then I, I can learn from this, right? This, this goes back also to like, hey, how can work be, you know, the platform for evolution for me, right? Like, if these fears are coming up, if these, you know, like <laughs> difficult bosses are coming up, right? What, and, and I know I'm, doing, I'm anchored in my Swadharma, what do I need to learn from this? What, you know, really actively, proactively working through the fear is important. Now, 
I, I will say like when I, when I was a lawyer, not anchored in my Dharma, it was a lot harder to deal with the toxic boss, with the toxic clients, you know, because I, I go back to like, what's the point? What's the point in working through this? Like, you know, uh, you know, because I didn't, I wasn't anchored to my why, right? But as a coach, when I do have difficult clients to deal with, right? When I do have career challenges to deal with, it because my perspective has shifted, it becomes a different conversation. How can I use this to evolve? How can I use this to evolve myself? So I think for me, that perspective shift was helpful in how I looked at the challenges. It can either be something that makes you stronger, right? Or it can be the thing that breaks you down. something that like I, I work through with my clients quite a bit and I think it goes back to the original question around like what does success mean to you what does contentment and fulfillment look like to you what are the elements right uh, uh, giving you an example like is it growth that's important is it belonging that's important is it uh, flexibility like autonomy is that important to you is uh, creativity important to you, right? Um, I, I typically look at, like, look at your top five things, top five, you know, we call this like values, like the things that you, that the things that drive you, that, that drive your contentment. Like come up with your top five, and I call these like your non-negotiables, right? These are things I absolutely need to have. Now, how, I, how these show up, you know, can shift. Right, depending on the stage of life, depending on the career, et cetera. But when you have a criteria, you can always ask yourself, this work that I'm doing, does it meet this criteria? Right? Am I experiencing growth? Am I experiencing, you know, do I have creativity? Do I have like whatever that means for me? And if it is, then you're 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 being in a line, you're being in alignment with your values, right? And then maybe it's something else. So you know, sometimes clients will come to me like, I hate my job. Like I, I just need a new job. And, and when we work through it, we're like, well, it's actually not that you hate your job. They're like, well, the day to day, I kind of like, it's just that this colleague of mine is like, you know, whatever. And so then it's a different conversation we have, right? So we do a check on like, hey, are these core things being honored? Yes. Then if so, then what are, Okay, let's work through the fear. Let's work through the, you know, other issue, right? Sometimes clients will come to me and say like, you know, I want to shift. And when we do a kind of like a values check, it's like, this work, like it doesn't like, it doesn't honor these values for me, right? It's just, and so even if I could work through the other issues, like fundamentally it is not in alignment for me. And so I need to go to a different job or I need to go to a different part in the company I need to maybe move up a level. Um, I need to maybe change my role. So I think it's it's starting with the, okay, what is success? What are the key components of success? Does this job help me with that? And then from there, deciding how, how it unfolds. So there is, a, there is I, you know, I think that there's that level of like deep fulfillment, right? Um, you know, going back to the Gita, like Arjuna, you know, loved being a warrior. Like that's, that was very deeply fulfilling for him. It's the other stuff that he couldn't deal with that, you know, led to him feeling like, oh, maybe I should just give up on this entire thing. 